Our last SCCA Pro Rally, the rim of the world, saw continuing trouble for Mark Higgins. A drive shaft let go, costing him the win. He was only able to take second. Driveline problems also causing Paul Schwanier's third DNF in a row. Excitement for the Subaru team as Mark Lovell took an uncharacteristic tumble. The crew was able to get the pieces back together. He carried on to finish third overall. In the other Subaru, Raman Alangaman's engine gave out, ending his day. The Desert Heat also took a toll on Reese Millen. Continuous overheating problems in the Mitsubishi caused him to drop out of the event as well. Mark Nelson was able to overcome driveline problems for a fifth place finish. But for an unprecedented third time in a row, Dave Higgins took the top spot on the podium. You're watching round number five of the SCCA Pro Rally Championship. Today we go from the desert of California to the forest of Pennsylvania for the Susquehanna Trail Rally. First out of downtown Wellsboro into the forest, 2001 Drivers Championship runner-up Seamus Burke. The event uses the well-groomed gravel roads in the Tioga Forest. Four stages in the morning make up leg one, then six more in the evening for a total of 322 miles. Seamus Burke into the woods. It's been raining for several days, so without the cover of dust, he was not thrilled to be first on the road. Uh, we're probably running from them because, uh, you know, we're clean, clean the road, the little is on top of the roads. A lot of marbles on these fast gravel roads. David Higgins next behind him. To try and do a no-risk rally, we've got no idea of what to expect out here, apart from everybody who tells us how fast it is, which will not be the best suited rally for us because we tend to like the more technical, twisty stuff. Big changes on board Paul Schwanier's Hyundai. They're trying out a new co-driver with John Benny who flew in from Scotland. It's a big change for Schwanier, not having longtime teammate Jeff Becker on his right side. They seem to have it worked out. 120, small crest. 100, crest 70. Crest and right five minus over crest tightens. To four, into crest. 120, left five over crest. 200. Some teams new to the U.S., like the Subaru pair of Steve Turvey and Mark Lovell, are finally getting used to the U.S. roads. And what? Last year it was very fast to start with and I think it will be fractionally quicker this year with the pace notes. But you know the weather's a big player in that. If it's dry you can get a lot more speed. It's a fast rally, it's a tough rally. It's one of the best rallies. Mark Higgins is getting frustrated finishing behind his younger brother. Pushing hard here, he hangs on to it. Left five plus. Carl Scheibel is back with longtime co-driver Russ Hughes at his side. Raman Alagaman looking just to get through the event. Gotten our clocks cleaned the last couple rallies by uh, some just niggling unreliability unre problems. So hopefully we'll be on the pace and at the finish. Very first car on the road, though off to the side on the right, Seamus Burke, a victim of the marbles. His car's not badly damaged, but he was unable to continue. Yeah, we came into a long, very long left-hand corner and it uh, tightened a little bit and we slid out. And uh, just clipped a tree. Reese Millen brought his brand new Evo 7 all the way from California to stir it up here in the forest. He put it through the paces and then some. Before the event, he gave us a close up look at the new machine. The car is a lot more stable. You've got a longer wheelbase, a little wider wheelbase. Um, so, for stability, especially at high speeds, which we're, hope we're expected to experience here in Pennsylvania, um, we'll definitely prove that the car will be a lot more stable. Uh, it's about 250 pounds lighter. We took the time to acid dip the chassis and, and build it as an open class car. Mitsubishi has done a great job on the platform. Uh, the braking, steering and suspension is greatly superior than the 6. And uh, we're here to use the event as a test, which is not the best thing to do, but um, hopefully we'll come out with some good results. And Mitsubishi's intentions are to re release the car, I believe, in January. Um, and those with cars in the same class better watch out. It's, it's a potent street vehicle um, and with a little bit of tuning can easily take cars uh, three, four times the expense. With Burke out, Dave Higgins inherits first place on the road and first into the Stony Fork water crossing. He was able to complete the stage in five minutes, seven seconds, shaving 18 seconds off the existing record, a trend that would be repeated all day long. Paul Schwanier also pushing hard. On board, you can see his approach to the creek. 
The stage finishes in the middle, so you need to keep your speed up. He makes it through without any problems. The top guys know you can't win the rally on the very first stage. Mark Lovell's had experience here, but team orders ensure he keeps it to a reasonable pace. Crowd sounds disappointed, but the car's still working strong. Mark Higgins, another guy who's never seen this water crossing before. He was rewarded, though. He was able to shave seven seconds off the record his brother set just minutes earlier. Carl Scheibel knows the way across this stream. Takes it home, gives the crowd a thrill. Raman Alagaman, with the same orders as teammate Lovell, takes it easy. Finish turn left three. On board, you can see he gives the car a wash. And Reese Millen, pushing hard already on the first stage in the new Evo, plunges it into the creek. Mark Nelson and Charles Bradley sliding it towards the river. Get a chance to see how far that water really travels. Tim Patterson from the Northwest takes the plunge here in Pennsylvania. The Subaru Splash Report after the first stage, the top five all record breakers. Mark Higgins, Dave Higgins, Mark Lovell, Mark Nelson, and Paul Schwanier all shattering Seamus Burke's record set last year. No big thing, says the leader. To be honest, I didn't feel I pushed in there. I felt quite comfortable with being cautious. I don't want to slow down. I don't want to, you know, I think we've got seven seconds on David. I don't want to loop, throw that time away, so probably just keep going as we are. And what will be, will be. Roads are drying up faster than expected. Dust will be a factor when we come back. This SCCA Pro Rally Championship event is brought to you by Hyundai. Driving is believing. And by Mitsubishi. Wake up and drive. And by Subaru. Follow the U.S. team at rally.subaru.com. Fast speeds were becoming the rule. Out on stage number two, the gathered spectators got a quick look at Dave Higgins and his independently entered Subaru. Paul Schwanier was second on the road, looking to keep the position after the upcoming reseed. Crest, Mark Turn Lovell was crest. breaking a sweat yes. in the heat. Co-driver Steve Turvey pointing the way. Left. Near the start of stage two in Mark Higgins Hyundai, big oh. trouble. Caution crest, 50 past junction, Lafayette. Oil from the engine coating the windshield, making visibility nearly impossible. Incredibly, he did not slow down. Despite this visibility problem, he was able to post second fastest time at the finish of stage finish. two, but it was not to be. After a quick look under the hood, they decided to park it for the day. We've got oil coming out through the top here, so we think it's um, done a piston or, or something, and uh, that's the end of, end of the game. Good start again, and it ended up this way, I'm afraid. If this guy ever gets a clean run, his brother had better watch out. Reese Millen was running well into the top six on stage two until engine overheating problems once again slowed his act. We were experiencing similar problems to what we had at the last event. Um, overheating problems with the engine, the engine just not running right. You know, the, the Mitsubishi car is fantastic. The car feels solid, brakes great, handling is great. It's just, it's a tuning aspect that we we just haven't had the time um, to develop and, and test. Tim Patterson and Mike Fennell, this time a much more dramatic situation. Right five tightens over Chris, and then Chris into left four long, tightens to a three, it's gonna tighten to a three. He almost recovers, but not all the way. That was it for their day. Modern rally cars are built to take the punishment. Both are okay. Speaking of rollovers, you might wonder how Mark Lovell's Subaru was able to be repaired in just two weeks, going from this to this. It was truly a team effort. We decided the best way to get it repaired in time for this event was actually to fly the car back to the UK, uh, reshell it. Uh, we were fortunate that we had another car in build, so we had a spare shell there. And uh, although the other one actually looked worse than it probably was, uh, the quickest way to do it was to uh, get it into the new shell, rebuild everything else. We got obviously more resources back in the UK and uh, then fly it back again. So we had a fairly busy uh, couple of weeks over there in the workshops. Probably uh, as many as 20, 30 people and uh, a certain amount of input into it. And uh, they worked some very late nights and early mornings. And uh, so yeah, for 10 days, 
I hate to think how many hours we actually put in, but uh, it's proved worth it because the car's back here and uh, looking good so far. Back into the forest on stage three, David Higgins was enjoying the thickening dust cloud behind him as the stages continued to dry out, creating an advantage at the front of the pack. The number two car on the road, Paul Schwanger, wasn't too worried about the dust, though, as he and his co-driver focused their attention on sorting out an overheating problem. Cool the engine a wee bit. Going left one. Once more, these highly tuned rally cars feeling the heat of summer. His loss, though, was Mark Lovell's gain. Lovell had made up nearly two minutes on Schwanier here. Paul gave us the report. Halfway through that last stage, the car started to get a little too warm for my comfort and uh, couldn't quite get the cooling panes to work properly for a while, so we eased up just to make sure we're going to save it and get to this point. We'll regroup and go out for the second half. The high speed is taking a toll on tires. Carl Scheibel suffering two flats in two stages. They only carry one spare. There was a happy ending to the story, though. See, two stages ago, we got a flat and had to drive out on it, and we changed it. Then this last stage, we got a flat and had to drive with it, and it sort of ripped the rear end of the car off. Probably cost us about a minute or so overall. And uh, Ramana helped us out, loaned us a spare on the way in, so I owe him a favor. One of the great things about the sport of rally, competitive teams helping each other out in a pinch. Ramana Lagerman in the Subaru, one of the most competitive Ross out there. into care, turn right two. Don't cut, rocks on inside. Bridge into right four. Minus and left four plus. Hard charging Mark Nelson had found a tree out there on stage three. Heavy damage to the right rear. So far it did not seem to be slowing him down. He finished the set of stages fourth fastest, but the crew had some work on their hands. We had a little moment there. So we went wide in one corner and uh, just caught the right rear. The car was just about to come to, but we just tagged a tree, and but no, no major damage. The Hyundai race report after four stages. Dave Higgins just six seconds ahead of Mark Lovell, then Lagerman, Nelson, and Scheibel. The drivers get to take a break, and the crews get to go to work on the cars as they fine-tune the settings for these fast roads when we come back. We're back in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania for the Susquehannock Trail Rally. First on the road after the reseed, David Higgins churning out the dust on stage number five. Obviously with being the first on the road, it's always a little bit difficult because you've got no braking mark to follow, but we've just been very cautious and sticking to our game plan. Giving the dust coming out of his car, that is definitely the place to be on this dusty afternoon. Mark Lovell was fighting hard to make up the six-second gap between him and the leader. In the thickening dust, he was having a tough time getting it done. In two, mighty left. I don't know, I hope he's going flat out. If he is, then we should, um, we should be able to pull him in, or get ahead of him anyway. So it'll be a bit of a Subaru battle royale. To offset the dust, Lovell does have a set of tracks to follow. You can see the brakes glowing red here through the gravel as he sweeps more away. Mark Nelson's TAD crew was able to effect quick repairs on his Evo, getting him back into the game only third on the road. Paul Schwanier fighting through his dust, still making progress, even through the overheating problems they've been experiencing. 15 left six. We're definitely uh, we're working our way up to a pretty quick pace, and now with with Mark, our teammate, out of the rally, we got to be a little bit careful because we need to focus on getting to the finish. To finish first, you must first finish. Never a certainty in the sport of rally. Still having some engine management problems on the brand new Hyundai's. Raman Alagaman was fighting his way through the thickening dust. Into right three. You can see the visibility as the sun goes down here, right getting three. worse and worse as these cars are further back in the order. Okay, just be careful. You reverse it. The consequence, a flat right front costing him serious time in stage number six. He was able to limp it through to the end where help was waiting. The team was there, but only the driver and co-driver are allowed to touch the car in this type of limited service. We're about a mile and a half from the end of the stage, so... You know, it takes two, three minutes to change a tire. It's not worth it if you're a mile from the end. Fighting their way through the dust, Carl Scheibel and Russ Hughes moving ahead of Paul Schwanier in the standings. 
Reese Millen was trying to make up for his slower pace earlier, putting a lot of power into it when his car was working properly. Sometimes too much power. No damage done, though. John Drizlane had been having a good day, working his way up as high as third before being disqualified for speeding on a transit stage. The Mitsubishi race report after six stages. Dave Higgins opens up the lead over Mark Lovell, then Mark Nelson, Carl Scheibel, and Paul Schwanier now in sixth. Our guest host and future SCCA Pro Rally driver, Robbie Unser, got to talk to Schwanier about a sport they have in common, hill climbing, specifically Pikes Peak. So, Paul, let's talk a little bit about, I've been at Pikes Peak one at eight times, you're an eight-time Pro Rally champion, so let's discuss a little bit about the difference between hill climbing and rally driving. Well, in hill climbing, the big difference is we have one chance, one run at one road, right? Uh, and you have no real time in between to judge yourself where you're doing. Here, fortunately, in a rally, we have stages that are broken down, right? So I get a uh, judge for my pace. If I if I need to pick it up a little bit, I can find that out and go a little bit faster in the next stage. Get into the mode of driving intensely, and then now we've got a two-hour break, so we'll go back and relax. Maybe have a little swimming pool, you know, and then you got to get back into it again. So uh, that's another one of the differences between hill climbing and rallying. So there's a lot of focus, and you have to almost like golf learn how to go through those dead times to keep that focus there when you need it. Right, exactly. You need to be able to call upon yourself to be at at, at your best at any moment in time. Right. You'll see them all at their best when we return. The Sports Car Club of America presents America's Extreme Motorsport SCCA Pro Rally. Real racing that starts where the pavement ends. For the experience that lasts a lifetime, call the SCCA today or log on to the web at scca.org. As the night wore on, even he was willing to admit it was a big advantage. It's been a disadvantage up until this point, but now, obviously, when the, the air's getting still or the dust is going to hang around, it should prove to be a bit of an advantage for us from now on. That was something the guys behind him had been thinking all day. Mark Lovell, directly behind him, was looking for some extra help in the dust. Deceptive K right. Plus, very long. It opens and tightens. We can't get any closer to David. We'd be doing little spurts, but then we get held up. So I'm hoping the organizers will be charitable and give us a bigger gap so that the dust disappears a bit. The top six cars were given two-minute dust windows, but all the drivers were wishing they had more room. Mark Nelson was wishing he had more corners on his car, a delaminating right front tire ripping the front fender to shreds. It cost him quite a bit of time and made it even harder for Paul Schwanier on the road behind him to make up any ground at all as he fought his way right up to, but could not pass Nelson. Go on. And finishes just up here, go on. Right five plus. On board, you get an idea of what the visibility is like for these guys. Finish. Mark Nelson's tire told the story. Trouble too for Raman Alagaman. A spin out here gets him planted off the road. He's able to get it straightened out with some help from spectators and back on the road. A four minute lateness penalty had set him back to 15th place and he was pushing through the dust. Carl Scheibel's car was pushing, but he was managing to make up time, moving up to third place now. A frustrated Reese Millen found himself having to baby the new car. It's a whole new engine, whole new car. So guys aren't doing something right. They're, they're doing a great job, but they're missing something, something very important. He was still able to get a burst of speed and moved up to eighth place. Pro Rally veteran Doug Shepard had climbed from 13th to 6th place. Nice drive. The Subaru race report after seven stages. It's Dave Higgins, Mark Lovell, Carl Scheibel, Mark Nelson, and Paul Schwanier. A look at the other classes. In Group N, a big moment for Mark Utek and Jeff Secor. Into the bank, almost over, but they were able to survive and hang on for third place in the class. A remarkable drive. Shane Mitchell and Paul Donnelly had a less dramatic ride, finished second after the day's end. But first place in class and eighth overall went to the Canadian team of Peter Thompson and Keith Townsend. Over in the production classes, production GT saw Bruce Perry and Adrian Winnell finishing third. Second place went to Julian and Marie-Yves Pilon in their GT entry. But the class winners, Owen McGough and Jason Gillespie, put in a remarkable drive, starting 51st and finishing 9th out of a field of 86 cars. 
Production was won by Eric McCare and Irma's cast. Drama in two-wheel drive. Jim Robinson and Jim Newton took a tumble. But with the help of fans, we're able to continue and even finish the event. That's dedication. Eric Burmeister and Eric Adams in the factory Mazda Protégé put in a great drive, finishing third. William Bacon and Peter Watt took second in the class. While Lachlan O'Sullivan and Matt Chester took the win and extended their manufacturers and drivers points lead in group two. When we come back, we go rallying in the night. This SCCA Pro Rally Championship event is brought to you by Hyundai. Driving is believing. And by Mitsubishi. Wake up and drive. And by Subaru. Follow the U.S. team at rally.subaru.com. David Higgins' rear brakes aglow has got the rear brake bias set heavily on the car, and that may be a strategy for better handling, or just kicking up more dust to slow down Lovell. Mark Lovell has to really fight his way through it, all four brakes glowing. Um, six right over crest. And six right, 70, five right plus, 70. Puts on a show for the assembled spectators out in the dark. Trouble for Paul Schwanier though. Engine management problems slowing his Hyundai. The team had a tough time just getting him to the finish after the overheating caused his engine to shut down. If you're Mark Nelson, you know you've got two good corners left on your car and three stages to go. So he managed to put a dent in the left rear as well in the final set of stages. Only one good one left. Trouble two on the second to last stage for Carl Scheibel. He lost his front air dam and cut a brake line, ending his event. The spectators, though, got a nice souvenir out of the deal. The tough day also came to an unfortunate end for Raman Alagaman. Gets a little offline here. The reason? He has no brakes. The master cylinder failed, and the team manager sidelined him for safety before he could complete the stages. Reese Millen kept a cool head with his hot motor, hung on to take fifth place from Schwanier. But at the end, it was a familiar sight, David Higgins crossing the line ahead. The Hyundai final report, David Higgins takes the win. Mark Lovell just behind, then Nelson, Shepard, and Millen. Unbelievably, four in a row for David Higgins. We've had more fastest time than anybody else as well, so we've, we've won it fair and square, which is good, and nobody can say what if afterwards. What if they can catch him? David Higgins out in front in driver's points, then Lovell, Mark Higgins, Nelson, and Millen. Manufacturer's points. Hyundai still ahead of Subaru, then Mitsubishi. Group two points, Mitsubishi still ahead of Mazda. Keep watching for our mid-season report, August 22nd, 11.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm Russ Rosendale. For our entire broadcast team, we'll see you the next time we go SCCA Pro Rallying. Last year it was very fast to start with and I think it'll be fractionally quicker this year with the pace notes but you know the weather's a big player in that if it's dry you can get a lot more speed but it's a fast rally it's a tough rally one of the best rallies
So the first two stages are going to be counted for the reseed this afternoon, and we really want to make sure that we get at least up into the top six for that. Go all out. Well, maybe not all out, but we'll be pushing hard. Slightly held up on the last stage by Paul Schwanier, who he, I couldn't see anything wrong with his car, but we passed him in the stage. We actually overtook him in the stage, so we would have pulled um, two minutes on him at least. I think Mark Higgins has blown up. In the last three, we've been steadily upping the pace, and uh, we're fine. I think we're in third right now, so it's going pretty well. Subaru, so great stuff. 